All right, here we go. The first three say write the polynomial in standard form. So standard form means you're going to have the variables with the largest exponents first. So this will be 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 6x plus 10. The next one, the largest exponent is the 4, so 3x to the 4th, and then the squared, minus 2x squared, plus the 5x plus 1. And lastly, the largest exponent, so negative x to the 8th, plus x to the 7th, plus x to the 5th, minus 6. Okay? Next, put the polynomials in order from lowest degree to highest degree. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at and make sure these are all in standard form, and it looks like they are. So the highest degree is going to have the largest exponent. So x to the fifth, oh no, we're going from lowest. Ah, uh, from the lowest. So we got to do it the other way. So it's going to be x plus 3. And then the x squared plus 6x minus 4. And then the x cubed minus 3x plus 4. And then the x to the 5 plus 3x squared plus 2. So that's degree low to high. Now, this next problem, degree from low to high. Well, I'm looking at these vocabulary words. Does binomial have anything to do with degree? Yeah. No. no, binomial is number of terms. How about trinomial? No. Yeah, that's number of terms. No. So really, these two terms don't belong. They describe number of terms, not degree. Well, based on what's left, the lowest would be constant. And then the next one would be quartic. And then quintic. Now, let's see. If we were to fill this in, what would be next? Constant. What comes next? Linear. Linear. Quadratic. Quadratic. Cubic. Cubic. And now we're up to... So, there we go. That's a trick question. That yep. That was not fair. That was not fair. All right. Let's flip. And look at number six. So we have this polynomial and without a calculator determine the possible number of turning points. Well the degree is three so there could be two turning points. Are there any other possible options? Zero. Yeah, or zero. The end behaviors. The lead coefficient is positive, so the right hand is up. The degree is odd, so the left hand is down. The possible number of x-intercepts. Yeah, there could be three, or two, or one. Now, if one end goes up and the other end goes down, there has to be at least one, so there can't, zero is not an answer for possible number. Okay. The next question, coordinate of the y-intercept. Well, when you're on the y-axis, the x value is zero. And if you go to the equation and you plug in zero wherever there's an x, what's the y value? Four. So that's the y-intercept. Now draw a sketch of what the curve could lo look like. There are lots of options depending on how many turning points and how many x-intercepts you choose. 
but we know the right hand is up and the left hand is down. I'm going to choose two turning points and three intercepts. I know it crosses at four, so it could, one of the possibilities could be that. And you may have come up with something different, and that's okay. Well, right, because we're saying what the curve could look like. I mean, what are some other options? We could have two turning points with one x-intercept, and that might look like that, and that could be okay. Or we might have two turning points and two x-intercepts, and it could look like that, where it's there and there. So there's lots of options. These are what it could look like. Let's use our calculator and find out what it does look like. So I'm going to go to y equals, and in y1, I'm going to plug in the polynomial. I'm going to make sure the plots are all turned off. And then I'm going to do a zoom 6. <coughs> to reset my window. And there's the polynomial. There it is. Okay, so the first thing it says for us to do, determine the following characteristics and label them on the sketch, the relative mins. Well, I see a min right there, a relative min. So I'll label it. And now let's determine what it is. Second trace to go to the calculate menu. Number three minimum. We need to find a left boundary and a right boundary. And then we need to go between them to guess. And we can find out that the min is approximately 1.41 comma negative 1.66. Now let's find a relative max. Which looks like it's up there. Second trace to go to the calculate menu. Number four is the maximum. We need to set the left boundary, set the right boundary, and then guess. And the max is approximately negative 1.41 and 9.66. So we've done those two things. The y-intercept is here and we've already determined that that's 0, 4. And lastly, the x-intercepts, I see three of them. Let's label them and, and determine what they are. Second trace to go to the calculate menu. Number two is to find a 0. You need to set a left boundary, a right boundary, and guess. And it's approximately negative 2.73 comma. What is this 2e negative 12? That's 2 times 10 to the negative 12. So that means it's 0.0, .0 with a whole bunch of zeros and then a number 2. If you were to round that to the nearest whole number, what would it be? Zero. Zero. And let me ask you this. If you are on the x-axis, what should the value of y be equal to? Zero. Zero. Yeah, it should be. So the calculator has rounding errors that are very small. So you need to be smarter than your calculator. Okay. There's the next x-intercept. 
we need to do second trace calculate a zero we need to set a left boundary a right boundary and guess and it's approximately 0 0.73 comma zero and we'll save some time the last one is two comma zero okay